Andy Crow hasn't had a go at the crows since that monumental day with George Digweed. 585 birds later, they were done. This time he's got Top Shot's Mark Winsor and Rachel Carey down for the shooting. We've sown a field next door. Uh, that's gone into winter wheat after maize. This is a maize field. Um, there's been a lot of crows digging it up and they've been out here on this maize stubble which we haven't ploughed yet. For obvious reasons, it's wet. Um, so Mark and Rachel have come down today to try and make a bit of a bag on them. But there is a few pigeons here as well, so I'm going to make a, an area of crows and just have down the, the bottom edge, I'm going to put an area of uh, pigeons up. Because that's my favourite anyway, so I can hopefully whack into a few pigeons. There is quite a few pigeons migrating through here today. They're running a bit late this year. I think they might have found acorns and a lot of feed on the way down. We're going to have two hides, one there, one there. Uh, Rachel being one, Mark being the other one. Um, and I should be there covering because I'll spit here and miss a few, so you need someone to help him out. It won't be another red letter day, but there are plenty of corvids and migrating pigeons working through this part of the UK. Is it a lot closer patterns for crows? Yeah, they, they tend to feed a lot closer, so when you see them feeding, they're a bit closer, but I'll open them up a, bit, a little bit, but I do tend to have them a bit closer, yeah, yeah. Carol just sent me, uh, sent me some silver socks down. I've got the Silosoc pigeon decoys, I'll use them when I'm travelling light. Um, so I've got some of these. As it is, there's not a lot of wind today, but when there's a lot of wind, the old wind fills the sock up and they do move about. Um, crows do, they like it, there's a little bit of movement, they, but they don't need too much. They, you wouldn't want a whirly, don't use whirlies when you're with the crows. I don't have any, I've never had any success with them. Impressed with Andy's personalised Gerber chopper from UK Shoot Warehouse, Mark now has one, but apparently he needs two hands to wield it. As he leaves it in the car, we have no proof of this. Mark and Rachel have only recently come back from South Africa, where Mark was competing, but now the clays are taking a back seat. I've had a few days on the crows before, yeah, never with the, uh, the man himself. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's the first time shooting crows with Mr Crow, so I'm looking forward to it. End of season for you now though? End of season for me, yep. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's just a few small competitions such as Winter Series Fit Us and things like that, which I will be taking part in, but it will go to the back seat now, play shooting. It's more pheasants and, pheasants and fun, so it should be, uh, should be a good day hopefully today. Now you may have noticed that Rachel and her French Bulldog Bunny are really entering into the spirit of things with Halloween camo. Bunny is not the perfect colour for a gum dog and could probably do with a bit more body art. No Ruby, no, bit of a shame. Means I'm going to have to do a bit of running around so... I don't like putting them on the crows, um, for obvious reasons. Sharp beaks, eyes, um, makes it a bit hard, well it can make them hard mouth because they tend to pick the crows up and if, if they are winged they turn around and go for them so they tend to crunch them harder so I don't want them on crows. Um, it's real, us so we can run about. Crow has made two hides for the three guns 30 yards apart. Pigeons and corvids are fair game and Mark gets one of each as soon as we get settled. Now although you can't use electronic calls for crows you can use mouth calls and Matt from MPK Custom Calls has sent one to Andy to work with. Go on then. I'm so sorry, Matt. Matt also offers lessons on how to make the most of his beautiful, award-winning calls. That decoy pattern had better work. And work it does. The corvids are not diving in like pigeons, but gliding over. After some steady shooting, Crow breaks open the sandwiches. Salmon and smoked cheese. Do you think you've changed? Oh, definitely. Since I've met Andy, I've gone up in the world. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he, I think he's. I think he's a bit embarrassed that he actually made these this morning, and he's passing the buck to Michelle. Mm. So hopefully Michelle doesn't see this. I reckon all credit to Andy for these beautiful sandwiches. In that case, I'll have another bite. <laughs> Smack straight through the head. Place to clear them up as you shoot them. Otherwise, they, if they're not looking right, especially if they're outside the pattern, they tend to come across and uh, come across, see them, and uh, go back. 
before they're in range, so a place to keep the pattern tidy and keep them in tight. Because they, if they something not quite right, at least then they're in range um, to shoot if they, they get a bit wary. Corvids are definitely a harder bird to kill than pigeons, so what shells would the guys advise for this type of shooting? Usually go for fives. Um, I usually use. I use pigeon extreme most of the time anyway, so I use a clear pigeon when. Uh, when I'm over decoys and that, if they're decoying well, it's a bit, bit overkill using the, a serious cartridge like the Pigeon Extreme. So but that's why I use uh, the Game Ball Clear Pigeon over decoys. But yeah, I use the I use fives on. It does because like some of these today, they've been pretty high. Yeah, hundred percent right. On, on a crow, you want a little bit of a heavier pellet, preferably a five, wouldn't you, Andy? Yeah. Fives are the best because they hit so much harder. You see, um, sixes are okay, but if you get that real big, if you get that real high. Yeah. You get, there we go. If you get that real high crow and he's just out of range of six, just won't cut it. It's missed. A <laughs> six in the right place will do it, but a five, you just know you've got that 100% if that pattern's in the right position. Um, that crow's coming down. Thank you, Andy. Even got a loading service today. You asked me if I've changed earlier on, he's changed. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not it. These birds make no money at a game dealer, but an effort made now may help make your farmer friend feel warm and fuzzy, thus securing your pigeon shooting for another season. It could be worth the investment. Um, so yeah, yeah, I've got a bit of game shooting coming up. Um, try and get out and get some rabbits this week. Now things are uh, a nice shot. Um, yeah, now. Now things I'm on top of me work, I'll, I'll get out and shoot some rabbits. So, got a nice new hand shorts to try out. So yeah, happy days, yeah. Yeah, it will be happy days. And then I'm off on holiday. Even happier days. Even happier days. Top up the tan. When David heads off to get his witch's outfit on, Crow, Mark and Rachel have 50 on the deck, but nearly double the score by the time they pack up. They won't have made much of a dent in the huge Corvid numbers around at the moment, but they have, they hope, bounced them on.